My name is John Reynolds, and this is the first showing of The Critical Review. The story that we're going to be covering today, and we're going to be reviewing today, is the story known as Welcome to the NHK. Welcome to the NHK is a manga written by Tatsuhiko Takamoto and illustrated by Yoshi Oshi Abe and originally published from 2004 to 2007. Now, NHK is a very interesting story in that it's a satire of the manga world and from the darker point of view of it, as far as going from the otaku to the people who are obsessed with it, and ultimately focuses on why people are lonely and how people can find meaning in a world that apparently seems to have no meaning, according to the author. So, where do we start from here? We start off with the story as far as with the main character of Tatsuhiro Sato. Sato is a 22-year-old uh, college dropout who's now living as a recluse at home and can hardly get out of his house even to find a part-time job. In fact, he's so much at home that the best way he finds company is to take drugs and talk to his friend, Mr. Microwave and Mr. Refrigerator. Now you've got to be saying, wow, what kind of protagonist we've got here? Already in page 5, he's taking drugs, talking to a refrigerator and... We expect to see this go. Well, you know, let's go with it because we, we must remember this is a comedy, you know, things can be funny and stuff like that. And we're going with it. As far as when he starts with talking to the refrigerator, he gets into this conversation and he believes himself to be part of, or the refrigerator tells him that he is part of a conspiracy from the NHK. The NHK, Nihon, Brogman, blah, 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 is pretty much stands for the Japanese broadcast station. And they're responsible for him being a recluse, according to the refrigerator, and then internalized by himself. Shortly on after, he meets a uh, girl named Misaki. Misaki is, uh, comes across first, introduces as her aunt, who's actually her mother, um, is, goes around block to block evangelizing, and Sato quickly kicks them out of his house, says he doesn't need it because he's not a hikimori, and that he's perfectly okay. Misaki comes later to him and asks if he really wants to be a hikimori or if he doesn't want to and gives uh, him the option of taking an, part of an experiment to break out of his hikimori syndrome. Next we have the introduction of the character uh, Yamasaki. Yamasaki will be is uh, Sato's underclassman, former underclassman because they both dropped out of college, who's living as a recluse right next to him. Yamasaki is responsible for introducing Sato to the world of pornography and hentai, and in fact convinces Sato that what they really need to do to stop this conspiracy against the NHK is to create the ultimate hentai game, which they will sell and win the award of culture. Ironic? Yeah, because, you know, that kind of stuff versus, you know, say something like philosophy or like Harry Potter or something, not really going to win a culture award, but that's pretty much what the logic that they're going for, that this is a rebellion against the system. So we have stories going from this way, that way. Uh, Sato works with uh, Misaki and finally gets into a school where he's uh, watching over another person for a day and practice writing. You can really see his paranoia building up through. And the story pretty much goes on from all uh, eight volumes of how Sato is trying to break out of being a hikimori. He comes out as far as being as being complete recluse to by the end being able to stand up by himself. Overall, as we continue the story, probably one of the things that we want to say about this story is that it's not as simple as you would imagine. You imagine how a black comedy, druggy, you know, just does everything. That's really comical as far as saying that. The real comedy actually lies not in the way that uh, Sato does everything, but more in the way of how he's trying to avoid everything. I mean, he gets himself stuck, uh, he starts venturing out into the real world, then gets absorbed, starts playing, getting addicted to an online video game, and his online video game friend, this apparently beautiful girl, turns out to be his next door neighbor, Yamasaki, who's really trying to teach him a lesson that he should stay away from the real world and focus writing onto the game. There's also cases where, where you know, Sato's daydreaming and uh, having fantasies, coming to realize in awkward moments that what he's doing and then suffers no bleeds or tries to make up various excuses to get out of his predicament that he finds himself in. This, this NHK, though, is, uh, I would say, is a very important one, which is what really gives it its most powerful element is its depth of discussion that it brings to the table. It's not just a story about, oh, a character who's down on his luck, you know, he's a recluse, and then, oh, 
now I'm magically better because I fell in love with this girl. There's probably no good character, no clean character as far as says, oh, this person's always the greatest. Sometimes, you know, Misaki pretends she's an angel, but that gets a little bit changed as we go through the story, and I don't really want to spoil things in the review. So, what it brings to the table is, is a good discussion, because you have Sato, who's not actually a dimwit. He may be a dropout, but he's actually very intelligent. He's actually very um, kindly at heart. He may have fantasies all over the place, but when it comes to it, where his uh, senpai, his upperclassman, wants to have an affair with him, he declines her, saying that she's happy and she should not do anything to risk damaging that. He also feels his incredible amount of remorse for all the bad things that he does, for all the deviations he has, which kind of brings him, keeps bringing him deeper because he wallows in his misery. But it still brings a lot of good depths of character so that he's actually really trying to break out. It's just his own self is incapable of doing it. And in some ways you feel a bit tortured. It's only an eight volume series, but you feel tortured because he's first he gets into the pornography. You're like, come on, Sato, you don't want to do this. Come on, you can break out. You're rooting for him. He gets out of it. And he's on online addicting games. You say, okay, okay. Fine, gets out of that, you know, works out. And then all of a sudden he's on drugs. The guy can't win. In essence, he's a complete loser, but at least he feels bad about it, which is very nice. The story has a very radical conclusion, I would say, something that's also very interesting. It's not a run-of-the-mill type conclusion. Lastly, um, um, as far as going over through the overall themes of the story, it's really important to notice that this is actually a critique of manga culture, the DCG world, the otaku world, of people who are completely obsessed with manga and that's all they think about. You know, me, I really like manga, but I wouldn't say that I'm obsessed with it. A little bit. But, you know, I read philosophy, read, you know, a couple of other literatures and watch them over here. But I'm not the type of person who's going to all sorts of conventions and all that. And when we're saying conventions are not a bad thing, please believe me, conventions are a great thing. The point is rather to say that they're the stereotypical person who goes to conventions, only reads manga, has posters of manga characters all over the room, and all I think about day, night, and, you know, through coffee break is manga or anime. And to the point where they fall in love with the characters and have become completely separated from real life. And that's what this story uh, attempts to address. And it does so in such a very powerful way that you can't really relate to it. Uh, or that you can't really... Uh, say anything bad about what it's saying, because it's mostly, for the most part, true, and it's a very interesting read. So if you're looking for something on a very higher educational plane, I definitely recommend NHK. That said, it is listed under being for mature audiences, 18 and over, and that is um, a strong recommendation. Anyone who is, say, 13, 14, this story is not going to be for you because you won't understand all the stuff that's going on. In fact, I say, unless you have uh, the there's, there's a lot of, uh, say, nudity going on in the story, here and there from basically his fantasies, from, you know, stuff that actually, mostly his fantasies, some occasionally stuff that happens. But the way the artwork's done is not to glamorize it. It, in fact, does the opposite. It's more of a repulsiveness it's showing because you're trying to get inside his mind. This is how horrible he's become. And that's something that's really interesting because it's not fan service. It's more of art at that point. And there's a good, clear distinction, and I think that anyone who picks up the first uh, book will realize, yes, there's a very strong difference of it. And there's some pictures that will probably keep you up at night just because they're like, man, what's going on with you, Sato? Um, so we go on from there, and so that's why I say is if you have something you're, you're not looking, if, you, if you're still, still obsessed with fan service, pretty much not, stay, just, just stay away from that. But... Um, Overall, it does deserve its recommendation of being 18 plus. You must be able to take the scenes, not looking at the scenes for saying, oh, they're, they're so beautiful, you know, something like that. I don't, personally, I don't know, okay? I don't get into much of that stuff. Uh, but you have to be able to look at it and say, okay, this is actually providing a negative effect and blah, blah, blah. Um, and to look at more of the ideas being presented, and that's what's important about it. So, as far as for being the first review, I'm just going to explain a couple of the ratings that I do. I have a couple of ratings as far as saying Sublime. Sublime is the absolute most perfected piece of work that you can get. That there's nothing wrong with it. You should read. There's no consideration why you shouldn't. Excellent rating is that it's a great read. You really should read it if you're, you know, up to that. You can't go wrong with reading this story. 
Uh, we have third is good, which is good, you know, more good points than bad points, fair, you know, neither here nor there. If you like this genre, it's far as saying like uh, vampire genres. There's probably some ones that are actually very good vampire genres, but not great, excellent stories. For people who like vampire stories, it'd be a great story. But for people who are, say, more interested in slice of life, but occasionally would read a great story from another genre, it's probably not for them, because it's too cliche. Uh, then we have poor, which is more bad than good. Probably something, you know, it's, it, when we say poor, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't like it. It just means that quality-wise, it's not good. Such as Dragon Ball Z. It's not really a great story, but it is fun, but it wouldn't be ranked as poor. Lastly, we have Don't Even Bother. Don't Even Bother is the worst of the worst. It means the artwork's bad, it has no story, it's completely cliche. Don't even bother reading it. You know, you're wasting your money and or time. So, as far as for that, there's probably a good amount of stories that are there that fall under that category and stuff like that. Welcome to the NHK, I'm proud to say, receives an excellent Welcome to the NHK is an excellent story as far as that it has covers a large intellectual area. It also uh, has a large, it has great artwork and all the way around it has a very good story. In fact, it's been uh, commented to being close to or comparable to Catcher in the Rock. So anyone who's liked Catcher in the Rock, you'll probably like Welcome to the NHK. And if you don't like uh, Catcher in the Rock, you still might like it now probably because when you're in high school you're not set to read it. Okay, so that's it for today as far as for Welcome to the NHK. I hope you uh, enjoyed this session. Please click on subscribe and leave a comment. And I hope to hear from everyone. And please feel free to share your suggestions on what should be reviewed next. Thank you. My name is John Reynolds, and this is Critical Review.